All right, we're back here on Is It Prophecy on Israel National Radio, and the show is known as Messiah Hour on YouTube. And a quick reminder, people out there, if they have any feedback, any criticism, comments, what have you, email me at messiahhour at gmail.com. And this week starts my daily show where I'm on Sunday through Thursday at 5 p.m. in Israel, 10 in the morning on the East Coast. And Friday is a bonus show, 2 p.m. in Israel and 7 in the morning on the East Coast. As discussed in a previous episode, there will be a comedy festival to benefit Crossroads. And we'll talk more about what that charity does and that festival will be on December 25th. And here to talk about that is the co-founder of Hammer and Nail Entertainment, Jeremy Feldhammer. Jeremy, how are you doing out there? I am doing great, Ari. How are you? Doing fantastic. So let's start first with Crossroads, so what the comedy show is going to benefit that group. Tell us exactly what they do. Well, Crossroads is uh, an amazing organization that helps uh, troubled teens uh, specifically, uh, they focus on the Anglos, the English-speaking teens that have found themselves uh, in trouble, uh, you know, troubled teens. Usually it's kids that are on the streets, you know, kids that are getting drunk, doing drugs, and they're just there giving them help and support and helping them put them on the right path. They have many success stories, and they really are an amazing organization. And, uh, you know, when, when you and I decided to uh, start uh, this uh, comedy festival, we were looking for a way of maybe giving back to the community um, more than just laughter, but also, uh, you know, helping a worthwhile organization. And we were approached by Crossroads, and it's, I think it's just a perfect organization for this, and I'm really happy that they are involved. And, and just so people know, uh, a proceeds – of ticket sales are going to Crossroads, not just we're going to mention them in the show. There's going to be actual uh, financial compensation. Correct. Uh, a portion of the proceeds, I mean, obviously, you know, we have the people that are running the show and the comedians have to be paid for their time and, the, you know, the room that we're renting costs money. So not everything can go there, but definitely a portion of the proceeds, a large portion is going to be going to Crossroads, and they're very excited about it, as are we. Now, let's talk about uh, who is going to be in the show. I know we mentioned that uh, last time, but in case there are new listeners that didn't hear your previous interview, tell us a bit who's going to be in the show. Sure. So uh, I'm going to be the MC of the show, the master of ceremonies, going to be running everything, and we're going to have, and I, you know, I like to think I'm pretty funny. There you go. Yes. <laughs> got to have confidence going on stage. If someone out there is like, I don't know if I'm funny, then you probably shouldn't be doing comedy. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, listen, I, you know, I, I've, I've been on countless radio shows. I've performed at some of the best clubs in New York City uh, regularly, like Comedy Cellar, Stand Up New York, Pips, when that used to be around. Um, I'm not just saying this to toot my horn. I'm saying this because I want people that don't know me to actually come to the show. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, and besides for me, there's you. You're going to be performing. That's right. I am. Yeah, I'm going to be the show. So right. that's that's I'm excited for that as well. Oh yeah. Uh, then we have Je Jessica Fass, right? Who is a brilliant comedian from LA. She's a was a writer on many or assistant writer on many popular TV shows, including The Big Bang Theory, and uh, I think Two and a Half Men was another one of her credits. She, Jessica told me a story that. The writers' meetings are basically like a bunch of grown-ups acting like five-year-olds, like they tell fart jokes, and they just try to come up with anything that they could put in the show. So she thought that was a very interesting experience. Well, isn't that what life is normally like? Yeah, well, that's what I do personally. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I thought, uh, every day is one big fart joke. But she figured out a way to make money off of it, so kudos to Jessica uh, on that. Yeah, she's had a very good career. She's performed in uh, clubs all over California. Uh, the, the Laugh Factor, I believe, she performed there. So she's got a pretty good resume, and sh she'll be in the show. So, you know, if people out there thinking, oh, comedy is just a, a male-dominated genre, I mean, we're going to have a, a talented female comedian performing in the show. So that's very good. Yep. Um, also, we're going to be having uh, – talking about the Laugh Factory, Leo Shemtov, who actually just placed sixth in Laugh Factory's Funniest Person in the World contest. Uh, he was a semifinalist on NBC's Last Comic Standing a few seasons ago. He's brilliantly funny, uh, totally insane, and uh, it, it's going to be a great show. Yeah, we're very, very excited to, to have the show and have it benefit Crossroads. And let's talk a bit about uh, the location because uh, that's been finalized. Tell us a bit about that. Oh, yeah, the location. We're going to be at the AACI Theater. Uh, that's on Pierre Koenig. I, I don't know how the street got that name. Uh, from my knowledge, Pierre Koenig is like some American architect. Yeah. Uh, am, I, am I missing something? 
You know, the streets of Israel are very interesting of why they name it after certain people. I mean, there's the Abraham Lincoln Street. It's actually pronounced Lincoln. And, you know, Lincoln was a great president, but I don't think he had anything to do with Israel, so I don't know why he's here. And I think there's a Washington somewhere. I just, I, yeah, why they choose the names of some streets, I don't know. Yeah, there's Rehov LaGuardia, I saw. Yeah. I, like, is, I, I, I know he was a mayor of New York. Is, I mean, what was his connection with Israel? The only thing I think of is I heard LaGuardia, despite the Italian-sounding name, was Jewish. Maybe that's what, but, I mean, there's a lot of Jews you could just give a street to. Usually they they got to have some connection to Israel, like in Kaptima, they have Hapamak, okay, that made sense, that was part of the war, okay, fine. And you have uh, Kaftet November, which was a big day in the war, so fine. Yeah. But why, why there's yeah, Michelin or Pirkanik, I don't know. I live on Rehov uh, Ravaluf Yigaliadin in uh, Modi. Does that make sense? Okay, it's a general, you know, you name it after a general. How about Rehov Pines, or however you pronounce it? Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> I, I don't understand that, but whatever. Okay, again, we're speaking with Jeremy Feldhammer, the co-founder of Hammer and Nail Entertainment. Talk about the uh, comedy festival on December 25th. Now, we say December 25th. We don't say Christmas. We call it a different name for the show. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's the Jerusalem Festivus Comedy Festival. Uh, we're going to be celebrating Festivus on the 25th this year. Some people celebrate it on the 23rd. Some people celebrate it on the 25th. We're going to be celebrating on the 25th. It just makes a lot of sense. It's a Thursday night. Um, I really wish we were able to have Chinese food at the uh, – Yeah. Actually. Unfortunately, you can't really find any good Chinese food in this country. Uh, yeah, I know. That's really a shame. I don't know why – six million Jews are no good Chinese food restaurants. Uh, anyone out there, if you know of one – you know, let us know. We would be happy to, to do that. And uh, it'd be nice if somehow we could play, maybe have Chinese food and play a movie during the comedy show. That would really be good. <laughs> yeah, that won't be too distracting. Yeah. I'm sure Leo's won't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> top comedian, top world comedian, be distracted by a movie. But, yeah, there's no Chinese food here. That's a shame. We'll have him perform behind the screen. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he won't get his Israeli temper and yell at us. <laughs> uh, you know, I've never seen him have a temper and yell. Well, the only thing I can say is, and I know this is ironic because we're both comedians, most comedians are a little crazy. So he's got something. I don't, maybe not a temper, but and we've seen some of his act. He's, he's a genius. He's got to be a little nuts to do some of the stuff he's done. It. I mean, he's got really, really good guts to do all that stuff in public. Well, say so the average IQ of a comedian is 138, and oh. also that most comedians are crazy in some way, shape, or form. Okay, very nice. So, so well, it makes sense. Um. All right, I'm just trying to think if I know a stupid comedian. I think I know one. Um, yeah. Well, anyways. That's successful? Uh, no, that's true. That's right. He's not successful. Okay, fine. Fair enough. <laughs> you, know how, you know how you said at the beginning, I was telling you that you got to have confidence. you got to think you're funny. You should go on stage. I, I wish some people would realize they're not funny and not go on stage anymore, but that's a, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Uh, I, I had to be, like, forced to go on stage the first time. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah, I had a bunch of friends. I was working with a comedian, and he kept on telling me, you're funny, you're funny, get on stage, get on stage. And eventually I listened to him, and I did, and that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> but it, it, but it, took a, it took a lot of coaxing. Nice. Um, okay, so then you did. And, you know, before we continue, because you told a great story at Pips on the last episode, but for time reasons we, we had to edit it out. I wonder if you could tell that story now, because it's a great story. Okay, well, actually, that was that was the guy that was that was that's the guy who, who got me on there. Uh, a comedian by the name of John DeResto I was working with. He, he invited me to come to Pips and perform uh, there, and uh, I actually opened up for him for about five minutes. And the next, the next, and I did a d- decent job. And the next time I was there was at an open mic night. Now the guy who ran Pips at the time, which was closed, it used to be on Emmons Avenue, and she said Babe Brooklyn. It was like one of the first comedy clubs in the country. Um, he had an open mic night that he ran, I believe, on Wednesdays. And the main reason why he did it was because he just enjoyed heckling the new talent. Nice. <laughs> that was that was the reason. He didn't really make money that night. He sold a couple of drinks. That was it. He just enjoyed heckling. Um, and uh, I was up on stage performing, and I was telling a story about how a friend took me out to eat. And uh, he he said – I would never take you out to eat, he screams in the back. I would never take you out to eat, you fat Jewish expletive. <laughs> wow. So I quickly said, well, I'd never take you out to drink, you fat Irish. Beep, you know, so. Right. And he laughed hysterically. And from there, that point on, 
Um, I was welcome at the club on any night I wanted because he knew I had the chops. Uh, I think that's how he tested his comedians also, was to see if they had the quick, snappy comeback to his hackling. Um, <laughs> thank God I, w- I was lucky that night and I had it. So Nice. Again, we're speaking with Jeremy Feldhammer, co-founder of Hammer & Nail Entertainment. And uh, before we continue, uh, we've talked – about the story where you had a meeting with Dave Chappelle, because you were very involved with the comedy scene in New York, and you, you met him. So tell us that story. I found that very interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is actually one of the people from Crossroads that um, that is that we're, we're involved with. Uh, her sister was actually there for this uh, story. Um, I was hanging out outside the comedy cellar. Uh, I used to perform there a lot, like I mentioned, and I was thinking of just going in to, to, uh, to be a part of the audience of a show. And, um, I, but I was waiting for some friends, and uh, this guy comes out of the comedy cellar uh, wearing a hoodie. And, you know, the comedy cellar is very lit up, so he was kind of backlit, and it was raining, and it was hard to see who he was. Um, he was smoking a cigarette at the time. I used to smoke cigarettes. And... Um, you know, we just started talking, smoking cigarettes. We were talking for about 20, 30 minutes or so. And um, then he pulls down his hoodie, and I'm like, oh, wait, you're Dave Chappelle. <laughs> and uh, it was before he did his show, the Chappelle show and all that. But he was still like, you know, he did a lot of movies by that time. And uh, and I was a big fan of his. And, um, and we actually became kind of friendly. And I saw him a few times after that. He always came over to me and said hello. Um, then he became super famous, and then he – uh, f- went off the deep end, and I haven't seen him since. Yeah, he went a little crazy. I don't. I, I study that whole thing where he gave up the fifty million, and he went on Oprah in Africa, and uh, he went to the actor studio show and tried to explain what it was, but tried to say that he felt used or sell out. I just think he went nuts. I just I think that was as simple as that. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's really difficult when you're tr- when you're being pulled in a th- in hundreds of different directions by different people uh, when you get that famous. Listen. Hopefully, I should have that problem one yeah. day. Yeah, I think it's a good problem to have. It would be fine. <laughs> a 50 million problem. But uh, also, it was interesting with Dave Chappelle, my, my understanding is at least the appearance on TV that he seems like a regular guy. Did you s- feel that when you were smoking cigarettes with him? Yeah, he was a totally regular guy. Um, like I said, you know, like we were just talking for about 20 minutes. I didn't even know he was a comedian. We were just talking for about 20, 30 minutes, just, you know, about – I don't even remember what it was about. It was just like the standard, typical – conversation you'd have with somebody it was funny because we we're both cracking some jokes here and there but it was uh you know but it was a uh, it's just a regular conversation he was even smoking like the cheapest cigarettes you find at the at the gas station you know <laughs> you yeah you figure he'd smoke like a name brand but no not dave Chappelle. <laughs> well this was this was you said about 1999 no it was a little later it's probably about 2001 ish i'd say Okay, right before the show. So maybe 2000, 2001, something around there. So before the show, he did have a lot of failed uh, private, uh, failed uh, pilots, but he was, like you said, it's a big movies. A movie that a lot of people forget he was in was Con Air. He's yep. right at the beginning. Yep. He's on the airplane. He doesn't play a funny person. He's the guy that starts the riot. He has this shot of something. He stabs someone in the thigh it caused that guy to foam, and it helps the whole prison escape that, that, that started the rest of the movie. So that was a very interesting role. Most of his roles, are obviously, are very comedic. Yeah, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, that's actually how, uh, after we had the conversation, and I was like, oh, my God, you're Dave Chappelle. My friends were like, who? Wow. And, and I said, Dave Chappelle, you know, he was in uh, You Got Mail, uh, The Nutty Professor, you know, and I started, you know, Blue Streak. I started naming all these films, uh, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and I was naming everything, and they're like, no, 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 no. And then I go, Half-Baked. They go, oh, yeah, I said Half-Baked. <laughs> and, you know, and then they're like, oh, which guy is he? I'm like, he's the black guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think, I think that was impressive, that I actually – was a fan that knew what he did, and the last thing that I mentioned happened to be him half baked. You know what? What did he say to that when he mentioned half baked? He was like, "Yeah, man, yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't think that movie was good. He said that several times in interviews. I always find that intriguing because it's kind of a cult classic. But he personally didn't like it. Didn't like the way it came out. Well, um, I agree with him. I think the first half is great, and then it just goes really downhill. Well, I mean, it's a pot movie. It's kind of weird. It's not, you know, it's not an Oscar winning thing. It's, it's kind of, you can't really go to a lot of places, but it's a strange story. I mean, his friend kills a police horse and goes to jail, and 
they have to bail them out, and they sell drugs. And well, one of the best movies of all time, um, the uh, well, comedy movies of all time, um, a Monty Python, the Quest of the Holy Grail. You know that movie ended by them getting arrested. Remember that? Right. And that's because simply for the fact they couldn't think of a good ending. Yeah. So um, <laughs> well, we're not gonna we're not gonna have that problem with our show. We'll have good endings to all our sets. And uh, again, everyone can check out the show December twenty fifth, the ACI. Um, now we're gonna be doing a special. This show is airing Wednesday, December third, and tomorrow, December fourth, me and you are gonna hit the road. And uh, meet the fans. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, every Thursday night, um, Crossroads gets together. They set up a little booth at different places. Usually it's uh, in town by the infamous uh, Crack Square, they call it. Um, So they usually set up a booth there where they try to do a little bit of outreach to the teens, and they also try to do a little bit of fundraising. They also are participating in the Jerusalem Marathon, and they try to get people to sign up to run with Team Crossroads. Um, So they're there usually every Thursday night. Up until this point, they've been giving out, they've been selling or giving out cotton candy. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to do that this week for technical reasons, but uh, it, it replace, and to replace the cotton candy <laughs> is going to be you and I. All right. and we're going to be there kibitzing with the folks, so um, we would love for people to come out and say hello. Uh, also, you can buy your tickets to the show there. Uh, we'll be giving a special discount on tickets at the, uh, at the booth that Thursday night. We're going to be there from about 9 to 11, uh, and we really hope to see a lot of people. Um, and we're going to be signing autographs, too. Uh, oh, first, yeah. For the first uh, 100, it's free, and then after that, we will be charging a fee, so get there early and get your autograph, and, you get, and we might take a couple of pictures. Usually we charge – usually I charge about 1,000 shekel an autograph, you know, so. I like 1,800 because 18 is high, so that's more me, but, you know, teach well, their own. But, well, you, uh, you're, you're more valuable than I. There you go. So um, – but we'll be we'll be signing autographs and we're gonna be talking to people about the show and people there as you said can get a discount but also we're gonna offer a discount to people listening to this very episode tell us about how they can get involved with that yes yeah, not as big of a discount but it's still a great discount right now till the end of the week uh, tickets are on sale uh, at twenty five percent off uh, but you can get an extra ten shekel off by using the code C R E S E E A R I because they want to come and see you right Ari so. If they use that code, they get extra ten shekel off a ticket, nice. which makes it sixty-five shekel a ticket, which is really an amazing deal for an amazing show, helping an amazing cause. That's right, and the show again is going to be thirty-seven Pierre Kenneck, the AACI, and uh, we're going to feature a lot of great comedians. The AACI, of course, uh, if people aren't aware, a lot of theater goes on there, and we're going to do some theater, comedic theater, indeed. That's the plan. Yes, that's the plan. So it's a good venue. There's a lot of uh, good seats there that you can watch watch the show. And th- you got 37 Pierre Kenneck, uh, Festivus Comedy Festival. It benefits uh, Crossroads. And the last few minutes we have left with you, our goal, our long-term goal is to perhaps do a show once a month. We want to get comedy, Jerusalem comedy and Israel comedy out of the basement, right? That's exactly it. Well, not even comedy, just, uh, just you know, entertainment in general, English-speaking entertainment. There is a lack of really good quality English-speaking entertainment in this country, and there are a lot of English speakers. So you want to try to do a show of some sort, whether it be comedy or something else, once a month in different cities around the country. This is our first venture. We'd really like to see the support so that we – and we have been seeing the support – so that we can continue this and really, you know, help live English-speaking entertainment in Israel. Buy your tickets. Uh, buy them for yourself. Buy them for your friends. Buy it for your, your a soldier that you might know. Um, just come out to the show. Support the show. Support the cause of English entertainment. And, of course, support Crossroads. And you can find out, by the way, more about Crossroads at CrossroadsJerusalem.org. You can get your tickets at HN Tickets. It's like hammernailtickets.com, hntickets.com. Like I said, use the code CRE and save 10 shekel per ticket. And uh, since the show is the Messiah Hour, let's mention, mention something about Mashiach. Basically, uh, we bring comedy people, people get happy, happy is a big mitzvah, and then that helps bring Mashiach, right? Yeah, mitzvah gedola liot besimcha, right? There you go. So, biggest bits is to be happy. So, come out and be happy, not just with laughing, but supporting uh, a great cause. And, uh, you can, again, you can find us on Facebook as well, uh, Ari Lewis, A-R-I-L-U-I-S, and Jeremy Feldhammer, 
J-E-R-E-M-Y-F-E-L-D-H-A-M-E-R. And before we go real quick, I wanted to uh, mention a shout-out to my friend, Baruch Mordechai Garcia Gallo. He's getting married very soon, a lone soldier, and also works security at the Kotel. Uh, if you contact him about helping with his uh, wedding in any shape or form, that would be much appreciated. Again, he's on Facebook. He's a friend of mine, Baruch Mordechai Garcia Gallo. So check him out there. All right, Jeremy, uh, thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Everyone, again, the comedy festival is Festivus, Festivus Comedy Festival, December 25th at the AACI, 37 Pier, Kennick Street. And you can uh, contact myself or Jeremy to get tickets. You go to our uh, – also, we have a Facebook page. People can go there as well, our fan page. Right, Jeremy? Yeah, the Hammer and Nail Entertainment page. Uh, there you can see the Facebook event for the Jerusalem Festivus Comedy Festival. But the best way to get tickets is going to hntickets.com. All right. And, again, everyone listen to the show, you, meant you can write in C-R-E-S-E-E-A-R-I in the code and get a discount. So that's good stuff. All right, Jeremy, be well, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at, at about 9 p.m. near Crack Square. Come out, everyone listen to the show, and uh, get some autographs from us. All right, Jeremy, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the program. Again, our first guest uh, this afternoon was Rabbi David Katz uh, talking a bit about Hanukkah. And our second guest, Jeremy Feldhammer, the co-founder of Hammer and Entertainment. Everyone have a good day and be well.